and Social Security, and you were paying $4,000 a month to your assisted living, you would have income for VA purposes of negative $1,000. And a zero or a negative means that you've passed the income test. We're still going to do an asset test later, but you've passed the income test with an indication of getting the full amount. So on the income test, you're negative $1,000, you're looking at that $1,113 for a surviving spouse and up to $2,054 a month for a married veteran. And I always tell people, this is why it's the most important thing you're ever going to hear me say today. I gave the speech very early on when I very first started doing this. And the next day I got a phone call from a gentleman saying, hey, I was at your speech yesterday. And I called the VA. And they told me my dad had too much income and he was never going to qualify. So I want to know what kind of game you're playing at here. And I said, well, what did you um, say to the VA? He goes, ha, huh, funny enough, exactly your example. And I said, so your dad's, he gets $3,000 a month in income and he pays $4,000 to an assisted living? He said, yeah. And I go, so why don't you tell me what you said to the VA? And he goes, I said just that. And I go, well, humor me and tell me exactly what you said. And he said, I told, they said, what's his income? And I told him $3,000 a month, $36,000 a year. And they said he has too much income, he's never going to qualify. So I didn't say anything, because that's me. And he went, hello, are you still there? And I said, yes, I'm waiting for the part where you told him, but he pays $4,000 to his assisted living, so his income's minus $1,000 a month, minus $12,000 a year. And he said, oh, I didn't say that. I got to go. And he hung up on me. <laughs> so you have to remember, if somebody from the VA is asking you, what's your income, right? It's the first test. And if all you tell them is this, you get no money. But if you remember this, then you've passed the income test, OK? Now, the things that we can deduct from there, medical insurance premiums, assisted living fees, home care fees, it has to be regularly occurring. And by that, it can be monthly, quarterly, you know, um, biannually, no, uh, semi-annually, yeah, twice a year, or annually. Your long-term care insurance premiums are also an allowable deduction. But if you're getting payments from a long-term care insurance company, that's a reimbursement. So that effectively gets counted as income. All right. So now let's do an example where somebody is getting a partial award. We'll just kind of switch this. What if you had income of $4,000 a month and medical insurance premiums and home care costs of $3,000? You'd be left with $1,000. And what would happen then? Essentially, I'm just going to like leave off some of the little dollars because we want to keep the math easy. Essentially, the VA would say, oh, $1,000 is what you have left in income. Well, if you're a surviving spouse, $1,113 minus $1,000, why don't we give you $113 a month? And so on. $1,732 for our veteran minus $1,000, that would be $732 a month for him. And for a married couple, $2,054 a month minus $1,000, $1,054 a month. Now, I've been told by somebody before whose mother was a surviving spouse, and in her case, I was like, oh, I think she's going to get $90. And she said, $90? That's not even worth doing the paperwork. To which I say, I've done a lot of paperwork in my life. Nobody is giving me $90 a month for it. So I think it's a good idea to get your $90 a month but not just because you might be able to fill your car up with gas twice, but because you're in the program. And when your medical expenses increase, you've already done all the heavy lifting. And you can say, hey, VA, I'm receiving this benefit, and now my monthly expenses have increased, and I would like you to increase my monthly payment. 
And in addition, remember how I keep saying it's regularly occurring, it's got to be every month or every quarter, it's got to be something trackable. Well, at the end of the year, anything that you've left on the table has built up for you at the VA, kind of in a flexi-spend account type of situation. So in our example, where you had $1,000 left over, that would be $12,000 on the table at the VA for our surviving spouse, right? She had 1113 she's positive 1000 they're going to give her $113, she's got $1,000 a month building up at the VA, that's $12,000 a year. So at the end of the year, she could say, hey, you know what, I spent $4,000 on hearing aids. And they'd say, well, that's less than $12,000, here's $4,000. Oh, I spent $2,000 on some dental work, here's $2,000 spent whatever on prescriptions, whatever on doctor co-pays, whatever on incontinent supplies, vitamins, anything that's medically related. So you can see how I get a little testy when somebody says $90, not worth the paperwork, because you're really, it's entry into the entire system, right? Does that make sense? Okay. So the asset test. The asset test is determined by each individual situation. And what happens, what we have found is the highest amount of money anybody has ever had in their own name, and what the VA counts is cash, stocks, bonds, securities, your home and car do not count against you. Um, the highest amount we've had somebody have in their name was $248,000, all right? So you, if you were to research this on the internet, you're gonna see people saying, you can't have more than $80,000, and if you're um, older, it'll be even less, okay? That's just not true. The way, what the VA says is if you have more than $80,000, they have to do further development. And there are a lot of people out there who are trying to convince veterans to buy annuities or to shift their assets, and what they do is they use that $80,000 limit, and even less if you're older, to, as I like to say, relieve you of that oh-so-burdensome cash, right? So I, we had three people in the month of September who got the award. Um, our average time to award is four months. They filed back in November, right? So they were well beyond our average, but they all had over $150,000 each. So our, our high net worth filers are um, the ones that take a longer time, but they are in our four month average. And again, like we like to say, it's just important to have the information in your retirement toolbox so you know if and when and right now, the VA does not have a look-back period. So if you're going to do planning, it's important to have this as, again, part of your retirement toolbox and part of your plan so that you can make the best plan. And, oh, it's not a yes or no award. It's if and when. And that's what I mean about finding out. Like, we have people who talk to us, and they call back every year. And three years later is when they qualify. And they're just, you know, tickled that they stayed on top of it and they got the money when they were supposed to get it. Uh, does that include your home? It does not include your home. And we'll, and we'll take any other questions at the end. <laughs> well, he doesn't I try, like questions. I, 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 I try to hold the questions just to make sure that we've got, we've got the whole presentation in. <laughs> but yes. Unless they're questions for me, because I get to do this. Right? Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, like my laughs don't get it. My jokes don't get as big of laughs because I'm not as interactive as the crowd as, with the crowd as I normally am. But Arthur keeps a tight leash on me. But just to go over it quickly for assets, it's cash, stocks, bonds, securities. You know the gold that you have in your safety deposit box. Um, all that stuff counts. But your home, your primary home, doesn't count, and your car doesn't count. Okay, but um, and they don't care about the furnishings in your home. Right, and as I like to say, you know that picture uh, over here that's a Picasso, they do care about that, all right? Any investment, they're gonna care about. The picture over here that your child drew that looks exactly like that Picasso, they don't care about that, right? So, and if your car is, you know, a Rolls Royce, you better make sure it's your only car, you know? So the, your primary home, your primary car don't count against you, but your second ones, your third ones, they do. And the other thing to remember about a home is that if you sell it, or if you rent it, it is no longer your primary home. And I like to say, go ask the people who live there. They will tell you very clearly, no, this isn't your primary home, it's my primary home. And so when you have a home and you get the VA benefit, 
and your home doesn't count against you, and then you sell your home, and you live on Martha's Vineyard, so you know, hopefully you get six, seven thousand, hundred thousand dollars and up, it then counts against you, and you would have too many assets for the program, unless you've done some planning. And I know that a lot of folks, particularly on the island, want to make sure that their kids get that house and that they do a plan. So, and again, right now the VA doesn't have a look back period. These are my myth busters. These are common things that you'll see on the internet. I've covered most of them in my speech, but I always like them to have my last slide and since I've, in case I've forgotten one of them. And number one is there's no $80,000 limit. It's a point at which four more pieces of paper are required. Big deal. Um, you're, I may say to you, you know, I think you can have 70000 in assets or 120, dollars but, you know, it's not going to be eighty. dollars um, That when a veteran or spouse is in a nursing home, the person who's not in the nursing home is still eligible for the full benefit. So lots of times, one of the spouses will go into a nursing home and somebody will tell them, oh, once you're in a nursing home, the benefit's only $90 a month. It's not worth filing for. That's not even true. You can get up to $2,054 a month if one of you's in a nursing home and one of you's at home or one of you's in assisted living. The reason people are confused about that is if you are single. If you're a single veteran or the surviving spouse of a veteran and now you're on Medicaid, right? So the government is taking your monthly income but paying the remainder of the nursing home. Well, you're already fully covered by one government program. So this program would then give you an additional $90 per month over and above what the person in the bed next to you who did not serve during a period of war is receiving. But if you're married or you're private paying, it's the full amount, right? So lots of folks, that's a big deal for married couples or even for single people who, you know, hope to be able to leave something for their children if they can bring in that extra money every month it really elongates the time they can private pay. And that's it. Back to Frank and Mary.